Hey what's going on guys and girls, exciting video today because I was able to get access to BARD. If you're unfamiliar with what BARD is, it's Google's AI that they recently launched to compete with OpenAI and ChatGPT. So in today's video, I'll be doing an in-depth review of BARD, I'll be going through some prompts, taking a look at the outputs, and I'll also be comparing the outputs that we get back from BARD compared to what we get back from ChatGPT. So let's go ahead and get started. If you would like to get access to BARD, just head over to bard.google.com and you'll be able to create an account and you may have to join the waitlist. But if you're in the States, you will most likely be able to have access to it sooner than other demographics. But I was able to get access to this from the guys at over at Learn Prompting. So I want to give a big shout out to them. If you would like to know more about prompt engineering, then I highly recommend you check out their Discord. I'll also leave a link for the podcast that they'll be launching soon. So if you're interested in learning and going deep on prompt engineering, that will be a go-to resource for you. So again, I'll leave a link for their newly launched podcast in the description below this video. So once you have an account for Bard, as you can see, it looks very similar to any chat box. Um, you just go ahead and enter your prompt and then the AI will uh, give your outputs based upon your input. So very simple interface and very intuitive and easy to use. So let's go ahead and start playing around with Bard. For this first example, I'll be asking it to write a marketing plan for a new salon opening in Toronto that wants to acquire new customers cheaply. The reason why I chose this prompt was I wanted to see if Bard will be able to give me um, very in-depth and very nuanced content like I would get on ChatGPT. So I made sure to enter a demographic, um, a specific industry, and what they would like to do. So this is the marketing plan in which we got back. Number one, create a strong online presence, offer discounts, partner with other businesses, attend industry events, get involved, provide excellent customer service, keep your prices competitive. Okay, so these are good tips, I would say, overall. But I wouldn't say that it's a marketing plan, right? A marketing plan would include different strategies. It would include a budget. It would include specific steps that you can follow in order to execute on your marketing objectives. So this is a good um, sort of bullet point uh, that you can use, but I wouldn't say that this is a marketing plan. Alternatively, I ran the same input on ChatGPT, and this was the output in which we got back. As you can see, it's more of a marketing plan. We get a summary, we get a target marketing, sorry, target market, we get marketing strategies. So different strategies that you can employ, you get a budget and a conclusion. So we get a pretty decent output from ChatGPT. But keep in mind that this is only one example. We don't want to just outright say that ChatGPT is better than Bard. Let's go ahead and actually give it a fair try and input some other uh, prompts. Before we enter some new prompts, here's a couple things that I've noticed. So it doesn't seem as though Bard is saving our chat. So if you were to um, leave Bard and log back in, I don't think your chats would be saved because it doesn't seem like there's a feature here. But also, if you scroll down, you also have the ability to Google that um, search query. So for instance, if you have an input or a prompt and actually want to search it up on Google, you can go ahead and do so. So we're getting some results from Google, how to acquire new customers cheaply for a new salon. Okay, pretty good. And then you can head over directly to Google. And if you want to get more information from the web, you can then do more research. So that's a nice little addition from uh, Bard, the ability to turn your prompt into a search query so that you can get more information. And if you wanted to update your prompt, you can hit the pencil icon and that's where you'll be able to change your prompt. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you can give some feedback on the output and you can also regenerate that output. So let's go ahead and regenerate this to see if we're able to get a better output. Okay, so I went ahead and regenerated the output and it's a lot better. It looks more like a marketed plan. We see a target market, marketing objectives, marketing strategies, budget, evaluation, um, and so on. So we get a much better output from Bard. So maybe the trick is that you need to uh, regenerate or generate a couple of times on Bard to get more relevant content while on ChatGPT, um, it's able to understand context a little bit easier and faster. So let's go ahead and try a different prompt. For this prompt, I asked Bard to generate the best low competition keywords for a website that writes about iPhone tips and releases. And here are some low competition keywords that we got back from Bard. And I would think um, if Bard is built on Google and Google is the search um, king, then we should be able to get really good keywords uh, from Bard. And by the looks of it, we actually got some pretty decent keywords here. So iPhone tips and tricks for kids, for seniors, for photography, for gaming, for productivity, for travel, and so on. So overall, we got some decent keywords here. Now let's go ahead and run the same input on ChatGPT and see the differences. And here's the list that we got back from ChatGPT, iPhone hacks, iOS updates, iPhone tricks, iPhone rumors, and so on. So we got uh, fairly different keywords. If I compare these keywords, the ones in which we got back from Bart, 
um i think we got a little bit more longer tail keywords but it seems as though the keywords from bart kind of followed a similar format and it was all a variation of like iphone tips right while on ChatGPT, we got a variety of different keywords, not just following one specific format. But we do get much shorter keywords on ChatGPT. So I wouldn't say one is outright better than the other. I just think they're a little bit different. But it is a cool um, sort of insight to see how both of them are able to generate keywords um, using inputs. Now let's ask Bard to rewrite this list, but only include keywords with four or more words. So now we want to target some longer tail keywords. And let's see what we're able to get back from Bard. So again, we get a lot of different keywords here. Um, but again, it's all mostly about iPhone tips and tricks, like iPhone tips and tricks, and then gaming and whatever other um, variation of that keyword. So let's go ahead and give this a try on ChatGPT and see what we get back. So here's a list in which we got back from ChatGPT, but it really didn't follow our instructions. We said that we only wanted keywords with four or more words, but as you can see, we got a lot of three word keywords. That's one limitation with ChatGPT. It doesn't really understand or follow number instructions. But as you can see, we do have a nice variety of different keywords in which you can choose from rather than what we got back from Bard, which was just iPhone tips and tricks. We get a variety of different topics here in which we can talk about if we were to write on a keyword about iPhone. Okay, let's continue with more examples. So I've asked the AI to write me a blog post title for an article about the latest iPhone release, its features and pricing. And uh, Bard actually wrote the whole article for us, even though the article isn't very long by any means. Um, it actually gave us the whole article. So it talks about the Apple iPhone 14, everything you need to know. So let's go ahead and run this again on ChatGPT and see how it differs. Okay, so ChatGPT did follow the instructions and actually was able to give us a nice um, title for this specific blog post idea. In order to compare apples to apples, no pun intended, I'll be uh, pasting in the same title for that article that was created by Bard and I'll ask ChatGPT to write a blog post about that title. Okay, so here's the output in which we got back from ChatGPT. Right off the bat, it looks to be a little bit longer than what we got back from um, Bard, but as you can see, the format is actually fairly similar. First, it talks about design and display, then performance, camera, battery life, price and release date, and a conclusion. Overall, let's go ahead and actually see how long this content was from Bard. I think it's probably about 400 words. Okay, so about 455 words. And the content length was pretty much the same from ChatGPT as well. So as you we can see for this example, we were able to get pretty comparative outputs from both ChatGPT and Bard. Of course, you would have to go through some of the content and information just to make sure that it all makes sense. But I'm pretty impressed by the content in which we're able to get back from Bard. Continuing with the prompts, I've asked Bard to write me the code that I need to follow if I would like to create a WordPress plugin that embeds YouTube videos on my home page and as you can see here it actually was able to give us a code in which we need to follow now I'm not a software engineer or a coder so I don't know how correct this code is but it is nice that you're able to generate code and get some instructions from Bard if you would like to create a software or a tool now let's go ahead and run the same input on chat GPT and see what we're able to get back okay so this is the output in which we got back from chat GPT um, as you can see here we got some code and it also gives us some instructions that you need to follow if you would like to use this code. So again, I'm not a coder, so I don't even know if this is correct, but it is nice that if you're now starting off as um, a software engineer or you want to build a, a tool or software, you can start by validating your ideas or getting some instructions on ChatGPT and then go ahead and hire a developer to actually create that code. Next, I asked both ChatGPT and Bar to fix any errors in the same code that it generated. And um, it didn't say that there was any major errors, but there are a couple of things that could be improved. And it actually gave us some uh, improved code from ChatGPT. Overall, as you can see, we were able to get pretty good output from both ChatGPT and Bard. I would definitely say that Bard was able to keep up with ChatGPT in terms of its output. There wasn't really a big delta in terms of the differences of outputs in which we got back. I would be leaning towards ChatGPT, um, of course, just because I think you're able to do more customization, you're able to get more relevant content, and you're able to go very deep on your prompt engineering with ChatGPT. But I do think that Bard has definitely improved their outputs, especially from the um, videos in which I saw. I was expecting it to be a lot more surface level, but in my opinion, it's a very promising AI chat box tool. And I think as they continue to improve it and uh, fix all of the bugs and the AI continues to get better, it will be a viable option alongside with ChatGPT. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you've used Bard before, let me know how you think it stacks up compared to ChatGPT. And also let me know 
know any general comments that you may have regarding ChatGPT or Bard in the comments below. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that you learned something new. If you did, don't forget to let it be known by giving us a big thumbs up and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. Until next time, stay well.